George Foreman is a two-time heavyweight champion who has enjoyed tremendous success outside the ring as a successful entrepreneur and best-selling author. His latest is called Knockout Entrepreneur. He joins us tonight from New York. Champ, nice to have you on the program. I'm so happy to be with you. Glad to have you on. Uh, what is a knockout entrepreneur? Well, for me, you, uh, I used to go out and box. If you wait around for a 12-round decision, you never know where it goes. So I like to get a knockout. And I tell people, if you want to really get out there, look to knock them dead. But you got to learn to sell. How did you learn how to sell? It's strange. I, I left boxing for 10 years, and I went into the street preaching ministry. And I didn't want anyone to even recognize the old George Foreman boxer. People wouldn't even stop and give me the time of day. So I learned how to attract them. I'm George Foreman. Yes, I lost to Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. They stopped. And I realized that's what you got to do. You got to learn to sell or you will starve. Mm. How did, um, how did, for those who don't know this part of the story, you end up going from boxing to street preaching in the first place, George? <laughs> I, I had an experience back in the 70s where I literally had a vision. I was dead and alive again. It scared me so much I became an evangelist. I couldn't even make a fist. And this went on for about 10 years. Couldn't even box or anything. And, uh, of course, everybody started calling me brother and reverend, do doing funerals and weddings. Ordained minister is what I did. And uh, for 10 years, I didn't earn any money. And after 10 years, I became broke, bankrupt. It scared me back into boxing to support my family and my ministry. Mm. How, do, how do you juxtapose those two things, being a minister of the gospel and being an entrepreneur. I'm not saying it's obviously impossible. You're doing it well. But how do you, how do you square those two things? Well, and the most important thing is God give you a strength to look after your family. And I don't think that anyone in their right mind, when you say, I'm a father. And I've seen a lot of guys say, I've got one kid, two kids. And I have ten, as a matter of fact. That's an easy thing to say, but can you support ten? If you do, you're going to have to get ten jobs. And get out there. <laughs> if you can't find jobs, you're going to have to create work for yourself. That's a knockout entrepreneur. Go make yourself a job. How did, the book is full, full of what, what you call Georgisms. How did you come across many of these uh, pieces of advice? Well, you, you live and you learn. I learned early on, like I said earlier, if you will starve if you don't learn to sell. There are a lot of people with the luxury of getting up every morning with a secure job, but there's always a chance that they're going to lay you off. And I decided, look, I was going to find ways to support my family no matter what. And you got to come up with isms, <laughs> like the shotgun approach. You just can't count on one thing, straight shooting. You got to have a big shotgun with a scatter uh, the, the buck shots are going to get something. And I have so many businesses. Every now and then, one will be successful. Um, when you say you have so many businesses, uh, some of them we know, of course, the George Foreman Grill is, that, you know, there, there are classes that are taught around the country about how you pulled that off. Um, take us back to how that came to be and how your name got attached to it. I love the story about this. Well, I was a darling of uh, Madison Avenue. I'd done so many commercials from Kentucky Fried to McDonald's. You named them. I was selling them. And one friend told me, George, you're making all these companies wealthy. Why don't you get your own uh, product? I said, sure. How much money are you going to pay me? They said, no, no, no. We'll be your partners. You get a product. And someone put this George Foreman grill in front of me. It wasn't George Foreman, and it wasn't attractive as it is now. I didn't pay much attention to it. There wasn't any money attached. But my wife kept saying, Try it, George. I like it. She tried it, used it, and forced a burger on me. Ah, I said, I'll do it. For 16 <laughs> grills, I decided. I was going to give one to my aunt and all my cousins. And uh, the next thing you know, people would come by and say, you know what, George, we love you. And I said, what, my boxing? They said, no, the grill. <laughs> doctors <laughs> doctors start <started> even <laughs> uh, uh, suggesting that their patients use the George Foreman. $10 million, $20 million. And to date, over almost 120 million of those grills sold. So it really should be called George Foreman's wife's grill. <laughs> really? She got the money anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm on payroll. I'm on her payroll. See, see now this, this takes me back to your ministry, George, because sometimes, this is me talking, not you, but sometimes it seems to me at least that God wants more for us than we even dream of for ourselves. Here you are doing a deal and you hope to get for yourself 16 grills out of it, and now you've sold 120 million of them. That's true because I found something that worked. I was back in the box and I needed to lose weight, but I needed protein, and I didn't want to burn my hand in the oven, so this grill was perfect. I just took it around. I was going to take it to training camps with me, 
and make certain my family were cooking great. And next thing you know, success. You're right. It's definitely a gift from God to, to align yourself with something like this. So once you pull something off like the George Foreman grill, by the way, before I go forward, do you have any idea how much, and I'm not asking for specific figures unless you want to share them, but I'm, I'm just curious because I can only imagine as much money as you made in boxing, you made a whole lot more off the George Foreman grill. How much more have you made off of that than you did in your entire boxing career? Wow, you know, if I try to put it to dollars, I wouldn't come close to it. But I, I even had to sell a solar company after a while. You know, people want to buy one, two, three. They say, okay, I'll buy them all. So I sold a company for over $120 million. Wow. And you, and you have any idea at the top of your head how much you may have made in your career? Oh, no, it's been that much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have too many cousins watching your show, by the way. <laughs> all I need to slip up and talk. <laughs> Well, you, you got those 10 kids, and, and they know their daddy's doing okay. That's right, and that's it. And uh, uh, someone was talking to me about the president's uh, uh, popularity dropping in the polls. I uh -huh. said, you fix that. My kids, when I come in the house and I didn't bring money and gifts, my, my polls dropped too. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as I'd come in with gifts and cars, that, the polls would go right back up. So learn to give, and they'll, they will love you. We know the story, those of, us who, those of us who are fans of yours. you got five boys named George. You've got uh -huh. five daughters with at least two or three of them who have the name George somewhere. George, what, what, are, the, what, are, the, what are the girls? Uh, that's George Yetta and Frida George. There you go. And By he, this he, time, my wife told me, forget it. I'll remember the name's George. <laughs> <laughs> so you got five boys with George, five boys named George. Two, two of the five girls have some form of George in their name. Um, all the kids, all the family, work. they work a part, as, a, as a part of these businesses now? You know, and that too, I told my kids, that's one who's going into boxing. I suggest that, look, you can do anything you want so long as you get a college degree. So Monk, who is George III, graduated Rice University. He's a very intelligent boy. Now he's taking on boxing. He was my full-time manager and became wealthy and decided he wanted to be a boxer. Now George III, <laughs> Big Will, he's also my manager now. So once, and George Jr., the oldest one, they run all my businesses. Wow. Um, what did you say to the one uh, that wanted to become the boxer? You know, I said, look, if you get a college education, I'm not going to say anything. He proved himself a champion to me. When you sit there and watch your kids walk across that, uh, that podium and receive that diploma, that's the much champion of I'll, I'll ever expect out of any of them. I'm so proud of him for that. Now you want to get out and be a boxer, I'll help him split that million as well. <laughs> um, how did, for you, education become so important? Yeah, and it's a frightening thing. You know, I, I, I left boxing, of course, uh, became an evangelist. And I looked up one day, I was facing bankruptcy. I didn't have any money, any money at all. Didn't even have a profession. All I had were these. And I thought, boy, you should have gotten an education, George. And it's scary to be a middle-aged man with nowhere to go. Mm. I told myself, no, no one of my kids will ever come to that faith again. Get that college education so that you can make a contribution to your family, yourself, and your country. And uh, I've, that's why it's so important. I've uh, got scholarships all around the country for other kids to make certain that they can't pay their grades, they can't pay their, for the school. I'll step in if they make the proper grades. Mm. How, um, how, what, what's your process for deciding we should all be so lucky, so blessed? to have per persons come to us with opportunities to go into business. But when you get all these ideas thrown at you, presented to you, what's your process for figuring out whether or not you can be a knockout entrepreneur with this project? Integrity. The most important thing is that whatever you get on television or you do a commercial or an ad, you say it's true, it better be true. And if someone is trying to sell me the Cadillac in the window, we can make a lot of money, George. No, it's not about making a lot of money, but can we make a lot of friends? The one thing about the George Foreman Grill, you go home, and I know that grill is going to take care of you because I said it would. And I don't want anything just to make a million dollars and it makes enemies for me. I had enough of that in boxing. <laughs> uh, have, you, have, you, have you always been this way and it just took time for us to see it? Or, 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 or did I sense somewhere in your life there was a an attitudinal metamorphosis. I mean, when you were boxing back in the day, I don't recall you being this, you know, big, you know, this big, happy, wonderful, smiling, friendly guy. Where, <laughs> where, where did all this come from? Can you believe my first role model was Sonny Liston? He was heavyweight champ of the world. Right. And his, his model was, if he comes to me, I'll kill him. And if he runs, I'll catch him and kill him. And he'd stare you in the eyes, and he, he had, seemed not to have any friends at all. And I, I followed that, uh, that philosophy for, for a long time. And then I had this experience, a religious experience. 
And I found Jesus Christ. I started screaming, Jesus Christ is coming alive in me. I had also a vision I was dead. I got a chance to get home and fall in love with my family and find out that human beings, that's the best invention ever. And I love human beings, and I'll never treat one ever, ever bad again. The last thing I want to ask you about, um, because, again, it speaks to your metamorphosis. Um, we all, boxing fans at least, remember the rumble in the jungle, uh, the fight between the historic fight between you and, you and Ali uh, now 35 years ago. Um, how did you get beyond that uh, on a personal level? Wow, that was the most devastating thing that ever happened to me as an athlete. I was champion of the world. No one had ever beaten me. I'd even knocked out the guys who had defeated Muhammad Ali. Then I'm in the ring with him, beating him up pretty good. He'd hit me a few. Then after about seven, six or seven rounds, he started screaming, That all you got, George? <laughs> what a frightening moment for me. That was all I had. <laughs> he knocked me down and took my crown. Embarrassing. Where do you go from there? Devastation. I'd wake up in the night sweating. Always reliving that seventh, that eighth round where I didn't beat the count. But then, 20 years later with Michael Moore, I got the second chance and I won the title I'd lost 20 years earlier. Mm. It's a great story. Yeah, but uh, you know, you learn uh, that now as a historical event, I'm so happy I was in that bout. Yeah. Why, why, Why so? Because now, when people forget about me, I can just bring up Muhammad Ali, and they say, oh, you're the one, the rope-a-dope, hey, I'm the dope. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> That's my identity, the old dope from the rope-a-dope. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great joke, uh, but George Foreman is long <laughs> away from being a dope with all the money this cat has made and continues to make, being the kind of knockout entrepreneur he has become. That is his new book, Knockout Entrepreneur by the former heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman. Big George, love you, man. Glad to have you on the program. Thank you so much. Thanks, champ.